chapter eight and nine. This is the last chapter in differential equations, and it's the it's it's students hate it at first, but since this is the plug and check series, I'm not gonna like drag you guys through anything. Uh, we're just gonna I'm just gonna tell you guys straight up how to do this kind of problem, and it, it, and people actually end up not minding these at all because it's it's not bad, really. So again, reduction of order. Uh, like always, we're gonna be dealing with the second order differential equation. Uh, just third orders really sh rarely show up on exams. So you want to find the general solution to one plus t squared y double prime minus two t y prime plus two y is equal to twelve. And they give you th that uh, they give you a solution to the homogeneous, um, which is y one is equal to t well not a solution to the homogeneous but they give you a solution so this is given solution all right so in reduction of order uh, a big hint that you should use this is that you have a given solution okay and you you look at this diffy q here and you you think to yourself there's no way in hell i have any method that can solve this right because koshi euler can't solve it um uh, variation of parameters you need to be able to solve like the homogeneous but how the hell do you solve the homogeneous of this guy you really don't so yeah okay so 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 how do we solve reduction of order we do it the following way you straight up guess so so step one is to guess the general solution so in the in the previous few videos we were guessing the particular solution here i want to make emphasize that we're guessing the general solution not the particular solution but the general solution the overall solution including the homogeneous including the particular this is what we're guessing we guess that y notice there's no subscript is equal to y1 u okay so we're given a y1 we're given a solution y1 and so y is equal to y1 u that means Okay, in our case, y is equal to t u of t, right? Okay, so u, again, here u just became u of t because u is some function, all right? And then y1 is also a function, which is t. So I guess this really should be like y1 of t u of t, okay? Cool. So, all right, so this is y. And so what is y prime? y prime would be t u prime of t plus u of t, all right? So you have to take the product rule here, all right? On t and u, all right? And then y double prime is equal to t u double prime of t plus, uh, plus what? Here you get the u prime of t and then you get u prime of t again so this is t u prime of t or t u double prime of t plus 2 u prime at t okay so here we have y y prime and y double prime so now step two is to plug into the original equation so now this becomes 1 plus t squared t u double prime of t plus 2 u prime of t and for convenience you can just drop the like parentheses t out um it, it makes this a lot shorter to write so we just drop the parentheses t but like just remember that it's like it's still here but like we're just dropping it for now okay and then um plus uh, t uh minus 2 t times y prime which is t u prime of t plus u of t all right plus uh 2y which is 2 uh t times u all right and so and i need to distinguish my t and my plus signs okay so now what right so this is equal to 12 okay and now a hint is you can just ignore the u terms so instead of the u prime so you 
you can ignore the u terms but not the u prime or the u double prime terms so any term that has a u just replace it with a zero so that, that just erase it so that just goes away this u term just goes away and if you actually worked that out you would have seen that you would have seen that they canceled anyways and that's the point that's why it's called reduction of order because you lose all the u terms you actually just lose these terms uh when you plug when you plug in to the original equation you lose your u terms so you can just treat them as zero so in this case i'm i'm not even gonna like cancel them out on the page for you i'm just gonna straight up erase them because i don't need a because i know that they're gonna end up being zero okay and that always happens in reduction of order so it makes these calculations a lot simpler than you really think they are so now what so now we got this equation here okay so now we got we're just gonna you know foil it so you get tu double prime uh first outer plus like uh, this is like what two u prime plus inner t cube u double prime last two t squared u prime all right and now this is minus two t squared u prime is equal to 12. okay and so what happens well this guy and that guy cancel pretty obviously and so now we're left with then uh t uh, cube u, uh, so this is t u double prime plus 2 u prime plus t cube u double prime is equal to 12 and so uh, we're going to combine the u double prime terms and so this is really t cubed plus t u double prime um, plus 2 u prime is equal to 12 okay and now what so now we have a differential equation um, and okay and so 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 sure we still have a differential equation and we solve this using a technique called the integrating factor which technically is chapter one of this textbook but we just never cover it so how do we find the integrating factor so uh now what you want to do is you want to isolate this u double prime term so you want to take it by itself so now you get u double prime plus 2 divided by t cubed plus t, right? Because so we just divide everything by t cubed plus t is equal to 12 over t cubed plus t. Okay, so we need so we need this guy to be, we need this right here to be a 1, okay? All right, this is a 1. That's good. Um, and I dropped a u prime. Okay. So now what? Now, this guy right here, the coefficient from u prime is our integrating factor. Okay, and what does that mean? It means that I I I actually just need this. I need this to be e to the integral of the integrating factor. So, what do I need to do? I need to step three then. All right, so just bear with me for now right so step three um i need to find the integrating factor okay so i take this coefficient right here and i essentially stick it into this integral which is on top of a e all right on top of an exponent so i have e to the integral of the integrating factor and so just straight up finding the integrating factor for now in our case this is the integral of 2 divided by t cubed plus t, okay? Uh, this is a pretty stupid integrating factor. It, it, it'll usually be a, not, a lot nicer than this, but um, this is equal to 2 over t minus 2t over 1 plus t squared, uh, and this is by partial fractions. <laughs> so if you remember uh, 104, uh, or if you remember Calc BC, the one time it rears its ugly head, I literally have never seen any problem in any other math, in 114 or two, any other problem in 240 have this. So now I can actually just integrate this um, because this is equal to uh, 2ln t uh, minus ln of 1 plus t squared. Okay, and so you get the first guy, uh, you get this first guy pretty clearly, um, but if you integrate the second guy, uh, you have to use a u sub. 
to get that. Okay. So, uh, and then you use the fact that you have, uh, you, you use the fact that LN has this fact that it, you use the fact that LN like logs have really cool things you can do. So this is right. LN T squared minus LN uh, one plus T squared. Okay. And which then just ends up being ln of t squared divided by one plus t squared, right? By properties of log. So this is all, so these last two steps are all by the properties of log. But now remember that this guy sits on top of an e, right? So, so this guy sits on top of an e right here, right? So now e to the integral of two over t cubed plus t is really e to the ln t squared over one plus t squared. Well, e to the ln just cancels it out. So this is just t squared over one plus t squared. Okay, so this is my integrating factor. So, 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 so this is the result from the integrating factor. Okay, and now what? Now you wanna multiply through by the integrating factor. So you take this equation right here, take this equation right here, and you multiply the integrating factor through. So now I got, so I had t, u double prime plus uh, two over one plus t squared um, u prime was equal to 12 over one plus t squared, right? And so now if I multiply through by the integrating factor, I get t squared one plus t squared u double prime plus two t squared uh, one plus t squared squared u prime uh, is equal to 12 t over one plus t squared squared. Okay. And this part is always equal the left hand side, left hand side always equal to uh, ddt of the integrating factor times u. So what does that mean? Okay. So first of all, um, I so technically this guy right here is not the integrating factor. It's the it's it's what goes in here, right? And then this guy, this e is the integrating factor. And so after you evaluate it, this guy is the integrating factor. Okay. And so you want to multiply through by the integrating factor. That's what we did, right? We took one plus t squared and multiplied it through um, from here to here. Uh, from the first first line to the second line. So the left hand side is always equal to DDT of the integrating factor times U prime. Okay, and so this is then just DDT of T squared over one plus T squared U prime is now equal to the right hand side, which is 12 T over one plus T squared squared. All right. And so if I integrate both sides, I get t squared uh, over one plus t squared u prime is equal to the integral of the right hand side. So, uh, so what is that? That's negative six one plus t squared. All right, by u sub uh, plus some constant c one. All right, and I need to keep my constant here. Right, I need to have this integrating constant because or the constant of integration because I'm guessing the general solution. This is a huge distinction right here. You have to be able to make this distinction. When we guess the general solution, you need to keep your constants of integration, all right? So what did we do? From this step to this step, we integrated into both sides, all right? And this constant of integration is because we guessed the general 
and not the particular. All right, so where's the other place we see the integral? Variation of parameters. We do not need the constant of integration because in variation of parameters, we're looking for the particular solution. Here, we're looking for the general solution, so we have to keep our constants, okay? Big, big distinction there. Now what? Now we need to solve for u prime. U prime is equal to negative six over t squared. All right, because if you multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that thing, um, plus this becomes one plus t squared over t squared um, plus c1 uh, uh, times c1. But this is really just negative six over t squared plus one over t squared plus one. Okay, um, times c1 right because you this the plus is now on the top so you can split that fraction up and now integrating both sides so that's still u prime and now u is equal to the integral of both sides which is 6 over t plus c1 t plus uh, or minus so actually 6 over t minus c1 t plus uh, C1, uh, plus C1t. So 6 over t minus C1 over t plus C1t um, plus uh, C2. Okay. And why do I have a C2? And we have a C2 because, again, I integrated from u prime to u. And so I need a new constant of integration, um, which is now C2. Okay. So now we got another constant of integration. All right, and so now remember, so what part is this? I don't even remember what part of this. this is part five, all right? So part four is multiply through by the integrating factor and solve for u, okay? And now part five is uh, obtain general solution. So remember y we guessed was equal to u times y1, all right? or u of one time u of t times y one of t what was u uh, what was y y was t y one was t okay so now this is equal to uh six so essentially it's this guy times t which is six minus c1 plus c1 t squared plus c2 t okay and this is going to be my general solution so that's how you do reduction of order. And this is a very powerful tool. Um, it, 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 it's not as bad as it seems. The integrating factor is not as bad as it seems. Um, the hardest part, uh, the hardest part is the algebra uh, up here, right? When you plug into the original equation. Um, and then uh, this integrating factor stuff, again, you just need to know what you're doing. So I would recommend uh, watching this video uh, again, especially understanding the integrating factor part and understand how then you come up with your solution. And so this is a reduction of order. We're actually not quite done yet because I want to now go back to 8.8 8 and cover um, the, the, the Cauchy-Euler equations when your right-hand side is actually, um, when your right-hand side is not uh, zero when you have a particular solution that you need to guess. And so that'll be the next video. But then after that, I, I think we're done with differential equations. And then we go on to systems of differential equations, which is really easy, by the way. And yeah, that's 240, so it's coming up real fast.